Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us again for another VES Artex Academy webinar. Today, we are joined by Ryan Piercy, who is the Director of Product Marketing for Sustainable Agriculture at Turntide Technologies. And today, he will be presenting Integrating and Optimizing Data Streams to Drive an Animal-Centered Environment. Uh, before we get started, um, just one housekeeping item. Uh, we will be taking questions throughout the presentation. Um, please type them into the Q&A um, panel on your screen, and we will address them at the end of the presentation. And with that, um, we're good to go. Ryan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Annie, and uh, good morning, good afternoon to everyone. As Annie said, my name is Ryan Piercy. Uh, to give you guys a little bit of background, uh, Turntide Technologies is the parent company of ES Artex. Uh, Turntide focuses on uh, higher end technologies from a motor uh, standpoint. We've introduced in the last couple of years switch reluctance motors. Uh, VES Artex, as an example, uses those in several different uh, ventilation systems. As well as another thing that Turntide focuses on is uh, due to its Silicon Valley heritage, is on um, basically the software side of things. And, and something that we're, we're really trying to bring to the market from an ag standpoint is a way to, to have better help farmers understand their data and how it, how it interacts throughout the farm. What I wanna talk about today really focuses on that aspect. Um, and it's a long title and there's a lot of different things to it, but really it's talking about integrating and optimizing all the different data that happens and is collected or not collected on a, on a dairy farm today. And, and how do we optimize that to get a animal-centered environment? So we'll talk about all those different aspects. Um, and again, I, I'll say this, uh, as, as Annie mentioned, please, any and all questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. We'll also have some time at the end to talk about that. I'm, I'm all for questions, even, even difficult questions that can stump me. Uh, it'll be good to, to hear and to see. But uh, with that also, I, I think it's, it's important to understand, um, we're gonna take everything and. And for those of you, I know some of the people who signed up for this webinar are international. A vast majority of what I'll talk about is, uh, let's say, American-centric. So very much focused on the United States, try to bring in some, some uh, aspects from other different parts of the world where they apply, of course. And I just want to make sure that everybody understands, you know, there are certain things that we're talking about from an 80% plus kind of aspect, right? From, from in terms of, you know, Pigeoning and holding down it's something into the nth degree we can't do, but when we talk about things and what we're seeing and, and what, we, what we see for the future of optimizing this, the systems and the system of systems, it's really taking that 80% level. To give you guys a little bit of background on myself, uh, again, I'm a lifetime ag guy, originally grew up on a farm, spent the last 15 years, uh, especially before coming to Turntide, more focused on the OEM, so machinery, so on and so forth. So. Lots of different experience on a wide range of ag topics, uh, primarily focused on livestock and uh, row crops, row crops integrations, um, from everything from sensors to machinery itself to different software systems used on. So pretty good, pretty good understanding, especially when it comes to dairies on all the different aspects that go into dairies. I think that's important for what we're going to talk today, talk about today. So from a Turntide VSR tech standpoint, uh, what, what we're really gonna focus on is something we've been seeing and, and, and discussing and working on is how to make dairies more efficient and profitable. And really when it comes right down to it, keyword is optimization. So how do we optimize dairies? And dairies of different sizes, we know what the market tends to trend to, um, why it tends to trend to that way and what can be what can be done one ways to improve that and to improve smaller dairies for, for what they want to do, whether that's expanding, maximizing profit, what, what have you. We'll talk about that. Um, I think it's also important to when we look at that and breaking down the industry today, how, how do producers of different sizes, um, how, do they, how do they basically utilize data today? How are they gathering data today? Are they gathering just from a cow level? Are they getting it from a facilities level? Are they looking at it at a marketing level? And then once, once they've got all those different aspects of data, how do they really correlate it? You're gonna hear me talk about a couple of different things. Uh, it's probably words I use too much in some ways, probably not, is correlation and causation. There's an immense amount of data on a dairy farm. And again, some of, um, some of that, in some cases, a lot of that, depending on the area, is collected, but there's areas that are not. So how do, we, how do we really take all those different parts of the farm that is creating data 
that in one way or the other is correlated to all the other different aspects of that dairy farm. How do we take that, understand that, and then with that data, see how they all correlate together and then drive useful outcomes from it, right? It's a big question. This question I know has been has been thought of for a while. There's some different strategies that have been, you know, tried to being brought into the industry. We're going to talk about those and really focus on what can we do to, to be able to help to help the dairy industry from top to bottom, being able to take that and optimize that. So how are we able to move forward with it? And a key part of that is we see from a VSR tech standpoint, we see the future of dairy really focused on an animal-centered environment. Now, from our from our standpoint, what you can see on the screen is kind of the VSR Tech's motto, is uh, is as understanding that barns and traditional dairies in the United States, of course, have uh, really been you know facility. They they've been designed around the facility. There was an existing facility. They had it because of whatever it it fit well on the in the, on the site. It was what's common in their area. So they basically they basically from a from a traditional standpoint, dairies have been kind of set up around the facility. Our contention is really what, what's best and most optimal and most profitable in the long term is centering up the actual environment of the cow and making sure that that's optimized, making sure that that is in the best specific condition so the cows can be optimized so they can produce the maximum amount of milk if that's required at that time. They can have the highest, highest amounts of animal health. Um, and that is not always in uh, in relation to to the existing building, right? So we don't we're not going to say and expect that uh, existing buildings are knocked down and redefined, right? We help uh, from a VSR tech side is taking those existing buildings and trying to optimize it for that animal through different means, ventilation, and so forth. Uh, and we want to see that continue in the dairy industry. So as new buildings are built, as dairies expand, so on and so forth, that it's the cow is really understood and taken into consideration. In the last several years, 10 to 15, this has really become, I would say, better and, and easier in some ways because we've got more and more data around the cows themselves, right? We've got ear tags, collars, different IoT devices, cameras, I mean, it kind of goes on and on that really, that really capture more of how that cow, specifically how that herd um, are doing and taking generalities. That's one aspect that I think has, has definitely gotten better. My contention and, and uh, what I want to kind of show today is that's not the only aspect. It's a very important aspect, but it's not the only aspect. And as, as we have dairies of different sizes, and especially when dairies get bigger, uh, there's other aspects that come into play and other data, data um, from different aspects of the farm itself that come into play that we need to correlate. So again, when it, when it, comes, to, when it comes to the dairy from the bottom line, um, what we've done to to try to improve that in the last couple of years is, is bring out with the Dairy Boss system, Intelligent Barn. And what Intelligent Barn really does is it takes a look at all the different aspects of, uh, of the dairy and in, in terms of the barn environment, right? So how, how are the, the soakers, the curtains, uh, the, the different ventilation systems, how, how are they functioning? How are they optimized for the cow? And we're, we're taking inside temperatures, outside temperatures, and trying to make sure that the, cow's t is, the cow is always in an acceptable level from a THI standpoint so that she can produce and is optimal production for the maximum amount of milk in that system. So this technology utilizes a lot of different aspects, uh, cloud computing in terms of being able to get that data, environmental data, data from the inside of, of the barn, being able to store that. And then also not just being able to automate fans, automate misters, automate soakers and so on and so forth, but it's also being able to take out and give reports. So we can, all, we can look at different aspects of the cow's production from a maximization of milk production, milk quality, also the animal well-being. So all of that is becoming more and more important, obviously, to be able to document and be able to see and then to be able to make better management decisions with that from that standpoint. With all of this understood, and I think this is a great first step that VSR Tech Turnside have made to be able to help out producers more. We know it's we know it's not enough, and we know it has to continue specifically with that because dairy is changing in a very fundamental way. Dairy, like a lot of the different parts of ag and uh, industry in large, right, is wanting to or needing to to be to be more efficient is to become more predictive. We need to be able to see cases of 
of disease before they happen, in terms of we need to be able to need to see changes to the market and react to them quickly, some cases even before they're necessarily happening. So how do we do that? How are we able to take all that different uh, data from the environment, from the facility, from the cows, from labor, what's available? How do we correlate that all together and put it together in, into one package that can help dairymen make better decisions? That's really what we want to talk about and solve today. So I think, Andy, there's a, a question um, uh, from a polling standpoint. So if you could select uh, what should be coming up now, and Andy may have to comment because I can't really see necessarily that it's up. So we have a question is, what do you think is most important for a dairy to have? Is it cow center data or facility center data? Yeah, Ryan, we have 90% of people selecting cow center data. Oh, perfect. Okay. So, so it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good point. And, and I ask that because what I, the way I see really this, uh, the way I see dairy really moving forward and the way it sits today is focused on both of those. And by the way, there's no, there's no wrong answer there. Uh, I think a lot of people pick cow center data, not just because we talk, talked about it, but because it's also what's available in a lot of cases today from a data collection standpoint, right? A lot of people have herd management data, feed management data that really focuses on the cow, all the other different IoT devices that focus on the cow. But there's another aspect out there, and it's an aspect that I think in a lot of cases really gets overlooked or there's not enough emphasis on, and that's also facility data. So what is facility data? This is a map I really like. I think this is from Penn State University originally. And what it does is it takes a look at an example dairy farm, right? So all the different aspects, all the way from the lagoons, digesters, to the head office, the way scales. And, and the point of this is to really understand that across a farm, across a typical farm, there are a lot of different points that data is created. And one of the biggest things we always talk about that, that is endemic in ag as well is, you know, typically what happens is farms become data rich, but decision poor. Well, part of that is because they're, they're, they're becoming data rich is they've got a lot of data that they can see, they might be able to draw small correlations on, but they're decision poor because data by itself or data just in one concentrated area doesn't always help you make the best decisions. Part of the reason I see, at least in dairy, is we've got so much data on one area, but we don't have data on the entire, the entire process, and specifically when it comes to facilities. Uh, why is that? Well, when I talk about facility data, typically most people are going to think about that as IoT devices on water meters or PLCs on different aspects, not just the parlor, which is more and more common, right? But do we have control of different aspects of a barn? Or are you being able to measure and monitor feed storage in the correct way? So all of those aspects on a dairy are important. Like I said earlier, they all correlate and relate back to what a lot of people think is the most important, which is obviously the case, is milk production and maximization and optimization. But I think, it, I think it's important to understand that if we want to move forward in it as an industry, you, you have to be able to not just collect it from one source but to collect it from multiple sources to be able to get good hard correlations and causations. Now, why is it not, why is it not when you go out to visit a farm, do they have PLCs and do they not have facilities, data, uh, collection points everywhere? Well, this is a softball pitch question for everybody out there. It's because of cost, right? PLCs, all those different devices are expensive. Um, the return may not be as clear cut for a lot of people when they see it. And specifically, this really relates a lot to farm sizes. Uh, it's another question I'll ask here in a second is, from a small farm to a large farm, where do they really focus their time? Where do they really focus their effort? And the key with facility data is, you know, it can help you make decisions in a couple different ways, not just from a strategic standpoint, but from a daily, a tactical, day-to-day -day operation standpoint. Cow data is, again, I think, especially for a lot of the people on the call today, is much more understood, right? What can be collected from a cow? This is one of my, my favorite kind of pictures to break it down, is what's, what's fascinating about the industry is in the last 10 to 15 years, there is a mountain of different IoT devices out there, right? You can see, you can see just kind of a, a breakdown of all the different aspects from, 
hoof health and general mobility, how much cow or how much dry matter intake she's taking in, what's her body condition, what's her temperature, how, how is her how is her overall health from a from a from an udder standpoint, from an internal um, internal rumination standpoint. More and more and more of that has been, uh, I'd say, better tracked and better understood, stood, not just by the industry, but by the dairyman. And it's important, don't get me wrong. Um, the, the different devices that we have that, that track this and understand this today is needed. Um, but there's a, there's a point where you, you get back into that, you've got so much data that you become data rich for decision poor, right? Even if even with the DHI or, or a herd inventory or herd um, herd management system, you can see small correlations, small KPIs. But the issue is you've got to be able to see this on a larger scale to be able to, to utilize it more effectively. And that's where you start to see that interaction with not just that animal environment itself, but the facility itself. Why is this important? And why is this hard to do today? Well, the key with this is, is being able to see correlations. If, if you're seeing that just off of one data management system that gives you a set KPI, that's great. That's simple. That is not the case for the majority of the industry today. The majority of the industry today, and I've visited a lot of farms in the last couple of years to, to see this in real time, you get a mountain of data in one aspect, a mountain of data in another aspect, a mountain of data in another aspect. And there's not a very good system today that exists that's able to take that mountain of data, that mountain of data, that mountain of data, and incorporate it together and see how that mountain of data affects those other two sets of data, right? So what happens typically is you either have you have other either have a guy that gets to play the game of Excel spreadsheet to Excel spreadsheet to Excel spreadsheet, going back and forth and trying to see, okay, do I scrub that data? Do I believe that data? Do I have to use some of my intuition of dairy farming for 20 years to be able to take to that data? How does that then set up? And all I'm getting back to you guys is that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. There are dairies that I visited where literally they have one day a week, the head manager just goes in office, locks himself away, and just starts typing out on Excel and transferring. As you can imagine, that is time and that is money. And more and more and more, what's most important to dairymen, no matter the size, is time. Now, there are other ways to do it. He's going to have somebody hired to help do it. He can have a son-in-law, a daughter, whatever, also working on it. But that's still, again, time. One of the more important aspects we've also, we've also heard is talking and talking to dairymen and people in the industry is, when I go in there that one day a week and I start typing and moving Excel file to Excel file, I'm looking at it and that's going to be good for that week. And I might be able to see it if I did it right the last week and I did it right the week before that, and the month before that, I can maybe see that and, and have enough information in some aspects to make strategic, strategic changes. That's great. That's good. I'd say that's, that's less done in the dairy industry than a lot of people think uh, because it takes so much time and effort, but it doesn't solve a key fundamental problem. And in person, I always ask this question is, on a dairy farm, what percentage of the time is really devoted to strategic compared to tactical day to day? Uh, the general answer is about 90 to 98 percent of the time is focused on day to day activities, right? Two to five percent of the time or somewhere in that range is focused on strategic. So the issue gets to be is today there is still not a very good system that can incorporate that data and see it live. As in, I can see how, how those things are related and creating KPIs that are value added live. Can't really do that today. Uh, and that's a, that's a fundamental issue because the majority of the time, the time suck, and the majority of what I, I can actually can control and do is that tactical day to day. So to maximize that or to improve that, what we see is needing to go forward is a way to be able to have that data talk to each other, be able to talk to each other, and then based off of based off of algorithms and, and advanced level mathematics, being able to show to a dairyman that in real time, as well as to be able to see from a historical standpoint to make strategic decisions. So again, uh, from a standpoint of, of knowing is, what are those differences in data collection between dairies? And I would say this going back from an American standpoint, there starts to be a, a 
pretty big bifurcation whenever you get to a certain size of dairies. And it's really prim primarily driven off the of size in the US. Um, and, it's, and it's a bit odd in some ways if you really think about it, but here's again that general, percent, general rule, right? That 80% rule. Typically in America, and, and how, we, how we categorize it in VSR text is there's obviously small dairies, which we categorize at about less than 500 head. There are enterprise dairies, which we typically categorize as 5,000 plus head. And then there's everybody in between. Depending on their size, generally between that 500 and 5,000, they generally gravitate one way or the other um, from a small to a large herd. And the differences is between small herds, like generally see to your left and the large herds, to the right is large herds or enterprise herd herds tend to be much more facility and I would say whole site driven than what you see with small herds. Why is this? And, and what do you call this? Generally, you call this extensively managed, right? They're looking at a vast area, vast set of facilities, a large number of animals, and they can see the best path to profitability, scalability to improve and get bigger is by being more extensively focused and extensively managed. What does that tend to have a, have a reflection of? Generally, as farms get larger, they become much more facility motivated, as in they understand that the day-to-day -day operations are critical. Like everywhere, they have a more and more limited amount of labor. So unlike the past, they can't just necessarily throw people at it, continue to scale up. They have to be able to have a wide set of understanding of what's happening on the farm that day from a facility standpoint to make sure that they can get those cows milk, the, the milk stored properly and shipped properly. Uh, much more so than ne necessarily small farms, right? And a lot of it has to do with opportunities of basically of scale. So as they scale up and as they grow larger, they also have to be able to do this and be able to be able to control that over multiple farm sites. Now, don't get me wrong; they obviously still do and use cow center data, right? Um, generally, what you typically see on these is they're much more over large large group sets, so pens. Um, larger herd overall, because what happens at the end of the day, you come down to a fairly small set of managers. And just like anybody, they only have a limited amount of time. So they typically have KPIs that, that look at a higher level, total herd, and start looking for outliers. Generally, also in this case, is they're focused more on facilities because they're focused on a system. Their system works well this way, right? So the cows that they have is the focus that they have is not necessarily always around the cow. They just want cows that fit in the system that are easy to be milked, as an example, maybe in this case, um, or produce a certain level of milk to be able to be, you know, quantifiable and scalable, scalable when they grow up, when they grow bigger. Excuse me. This is typically different than what we see on smaller farms um, for a couple of different fundamental reasons. Right? They don't have the advantages of of scale, the economies of scale. Um, at their typical levels. They also tend to be much more focused on maximization of the cow. Not necessarily optimization of the cow, but maximization of the cow, right? Um, this, is, this has always been a problem and probably always will be a problem in, an, in agriculture, especially animal agriculture, is it's always about maximization. Focus on maximization of the cow. Focus on maximization of milk production, whatever. Um, the issue gets to be on this, and this is, this is what happens and why as farms typically scale up, they tend to trend away from this, again, in my opinion, is maximization is not always what you want. Uh, if, your costs, if your costs, even for that maximization, are going under what the market price is or what the market price uh, is going to be, then maximization of milk, you're just producing more milk, but you're not necessarily returning anything for it, right? And so this is where I think there's a fundamental, a fundamental benefit that even small farms can get from large farms and vice versa, as we'll talk about, is optimization. How do you, how do you in times of, of low market prices, how are you able to optimize it so you're able to break even, able to make a little bit of a profit, or at least able to stay close so you're not just maximizing milk um, and just end up costing yourself more? So these are, again, fundamental questions. Um, but again, 
the, the thing I always say to people when they when they ask about ag and dairy as compared to other, everything else is especially large farms they just consider well it's like a factory right it's like a factory they're just focused on facilities and so on and so forth well it can be true in some ways but I always say there's a fundamental difference and it's what I just talked about in a factory if your cost of production goes higher than what your actual return is you can shut the factory down you can't do that on a dairy farm right? Cows still have to be milked. The facility is still running. So how do you optimize it? It's one of those areas that I think, again, as we talked about how we integrate these data systems, it's one of those areas, no matter your size or your scale, I think it's an area of improvement. So a question always gets to be when it comes down to, um, to dairymen that we go out there and we see is, okay, we know we've got all these data sets. We know we have that and the, most of them understand from a fundamental standpoint is, I, I really want to see this and compare it to that. A fundamental question is, why, why can't somebody just do this on their own, right? You've got all this data. Why can't I just do it on my own? Or like that guy who spends that one day a week and they're typing it up. You can to a point. The problem gets to be is from a scalability and efficiency standpoint. Uh, and to kind of explain this, you got to understand what the process really is on its own. Raw data is raw data. When I mentioned earlier, a guy who sits at his at his office one day a week and then takes his logic and looks at that data and says, is this right? Is there outliers? Do I have to clean that data and scrub it? Scrubbing, cleaning, and understanding data is difficult, uh, especially to be able to do at scale, especially to be able to do from a day-to-day, hour-to-hour standpoint. It is not feasible for somebody to necessarily do on their own, right? And the real difference is, what are you doing whenever you're able to take that data and transforming it into actual results? You're creating value. Now, a key point of this is, by taking this data and transforming it into actual value, what are you really looking at for? Are you looking at recommendations that are on the short from a day-to-day -day standpoint? We talked about earlier, where, where is the value to a dairyman generally at? Generally, it can be, it's more important to have from a day-to-day -day standpoint. So you got to have that data fresh all the time. Now, beyond that, you could also need data from a medium, more of a, a tactical month-to-month -month standpoint. And then that data from a long-term strategically standpoint, right? So do I need to make a process change? How do I make a process change? A lot of, the, a lot of farms struggle at being able to make this into, let's say, operational decision-making data. And why is this? because data ecosystems are complex, very complex. Here's an example, if I can bring it up really quick. Here's an example of what, we talk, what we'd be talking about in terms of, and I think this is uh, taken from University of Wisconsin from the Dairy Brain Project, of being able to take all these different data sets. You can see all these different data sets from, could be from ear tags, could be from milk meters, what have you. How that actually needs to be taken and transferred and scrubbed and processed be able to create an actionable recommendation or an actionable KPI for you to use out there in the field is fairly complex. Why is that? Why is that? Why that it really is, is because there's a lot of different math, a lot of different algorithms, as well as a lot of different scrubbing and understanding of that data that has to be taken, taken into consideration, taken care of, right? feasibly or realistically for someone to do on their own, this just doesn't make a lot of sense. And I would say that, that it's one thing that, that I would like to bring up for the industry. What, what's one thing that's really holding this back? Quite frankly, it's everybody in the industry being able to share and help each other by sharing these different APIs, these different data sets, so we can be able to see from one thing to the other. Uh, again, this is not just a dairy issue. Um, this is and, and quite frankness, this is an ag issue. It's understanding and getting that data those through APIs for it to each other for them to be able to see. Um, the, the real part that comes down to it is understanding that with, with this, if we can move to a, a system like this from an industry standpoint, there is a lot of value to be created. There's a lot of value to be created by being able to give real time, um, and, and strategic KPIs, because what ends up happening is the, the most important part of a dairyman's uh, day is that time, right? So how can we do this? Um, 
and how can we how can we take this to the next level? So this is something we'll talk about in the next couple of slides. So a question I have for you, I think uh, Annie just sent it up, is do you use KPIs in your operation and how often do you measure against them? So Ryan, we have about one third of people saying yes monthly and then another third saying yes, some daily and some at longer intervals. And then everyone else kind of falls in between. Yeah, so this is a, it's a great, it's a great point to bring up. And I, I expected, quite frankly, a lot of people out there to be able to be picking between all of these. As we mentioned, I think a vast majority of people want to see this more from a daily standpoint, right? Um, they want us to be able to see KPIs from a daily standpoint. The, the problem gets to be, like we talked about this last area, is the time it takes. Um, now, when we get into KPIs, and here's just some that I pulled up. Um, obviously, this is not an exhaustive list, but I'd say a pretty, pretty common list is from a dairy standpoint, what do you do for KPIs? How do you, how and what do you pick? Do you rotate those? Do you have those from a yearly standpoint? Do you prioritize some of the others? Why do you pick some of the some of these KPIs over the other? From my experience, uh, not just in the dairy industry, but just about every aspect of agriculture that is the same, every farm will be different. Every farm will be different for a couple different reasons. We go back to that those uh, couple of slides before where we saw the different pictures of the facilities, um, those will be different. Those will affect which KPIs you must, may necessarily wanna see and really track. Your environment may be different. When we go back to Intelligent Barn, one of the things we focus on is animal well-being. Um, and that, that has its own set of KPIs, really, in a lot of cases, that have a reflection of all these different things. Animal well-being is not necessarily just, okay, is she, is she in a comfortable environment? It also is, is she clean? Are we optimizing the environment so she stays clean, which would reduce the amount of, uh, or should increase her, her overall health? Is she getting good air exchanges? Is that gonna be able to, you know, is she getting enough air exchanges inside there so she's not getting any kind of respiratory issues? In certain areas or specifically with certain uh, facilities that, that a dairyman may have, he may have to emphasize some of those KPIs higher than a dairy, maybe even down the street or in a different area where they're not, they're not necessarily beholden to that just because of the design of the facility itself. It could also, of course, be the cows themselves different breeds for different areas, different genetics. You may, for whatever reason in those, er in those specific cases, you may focus some of your KPIs harder than the other. And I'm not doing all of this to obviously make this a KPI session. I think it's just important to understand that for your specific farm or for your specific facility, specific operation that you're working on, set, and it's important to set those KPIs from a daily or whatever interval standpoint by what is the most optimal for not just profitability, that's obviously important, but for optimization. And what does that mean? There is a lot of time that we've seen, we, and I just know this from experience, from dairy standpoint, that they may not know or see or have created a KPI on. And a lot of this is really only understood by, from a dairyman standpoint, or having somebody else come in here, doing an audit on yourself. Take a look at all the facility, not just the cows, not just what the cows are living in. That's probably more common for a lot of people, but is everything that the cow is having to do, is everything that our workers are having to do from a time standpoint, from an effort standpoint, from an efficiency standpoint, optimal? Is there time being wasted? Is there cost being wasted? Is there different areas where we're not efficiently or, or not able to take that milk being able to get it cool and being able to process fast enough or most efficiently. That is typically what I have seen as dairies scale up and get larger. They tend to focus more on the later half is how do we really optimize those KPIs on a rotating basis? It may be based off of season, seasonality, right? You get into the summer months, you're gonna focus more on the ability to cool, need the ability to cool the cows down, may have to worry more about, again, different aspects of the facility as it, as it comes into hotter temperatures or seasonability. Obviously, it gets colder, it's a flip-flop of that. The important part of this, for me at least, is understanding that 
when we look at it from an in, from an industry, all of these are important and have, we have to take into account, right? I think what, what happens for a lot of dairies, and this is no matter the scale from small to large, is they have a set amount of KPIs that they believe is important, that they focus on, they look at maybe daily. Um, some, if they have the ability, maybe even uh, more than daily, between hours to hour. But the case that, that they might run into or that we see that them running into is there are other KPIs out there that they just don't emphasize because it takes too much work and too much time and effort in their mind to be able to see and do that is actually costing them money. It's costing them optimization. So from an industry standpoint, how do we, do, how do we get it so we can make the dairyman more easily able to see KPIs, KPIs that he focuses on and others on the dairy, and to be able to see that from a more hour-to-hour, -hour, day day-to-day standpoint. One thing to understand is when it comes to this, all the things on this past slide when it comes to from a KPI standpoint are obviously driven by data, driven by data from your sensors on your parlor, in your barn, on the cows themselves, on different meters, so on and so forth. It's important to understand that when it comes right down to it, we're looking at two different things, right? We're looking at a practical data collection standpoint in the field, in the barn, in the facilities. And then we're looking at when we get that data, how do we use it? How, do we, how are we able to transfer it? And how are we able to, to be able to see those correlations and causation? It's always gonna be true, garbage in is garbage out. With the data standpoint, this is very much the case. Because there's, again, a fundamental question that I think gets overlooked, and again, I've seen this in, re in the real world, is, is that data of good quality? What does that even mean in a lot of cases is going to be the question. How do, you, how do you subjectively measure quality? Does quality in that data that you got from a camera in the barn change over time? It's a question, right? Because... I will say this, in most sensors, in most data collection devices, the most important things are the beginning things with that sensor. Was it installed correctly? Has it been maintained and cleaned correctly? And has it been calibrated correctly? I say this in no bad way for the industry, but visiting farms all across this country and other countries, I can tell you these fundamental things are typically not well done. Um, and it's an area of improvement, right? Everybody likes cameras, everybody in a lot of cases, uh, cameras get dirty. And if you're using that camera to be able to measure things, having, having a camera that's dirty can cause a lot of errors in data. Having, having a system that's not calibrated in terms of a data collection device that's worn around the cow's neck or different aspects of the animal can cause that data to be a bad quality. Typically, what I've seen is when data comes, between, comes below 80% of quote-unquote quality, it might as well be thrown out, as in it's not able to actually reflect actionable results in the real world. So this is, again, important to understand that data doesn't necessarily have to be perfect at all times, but it's important to make sure that that data that's coming in is, is cleaned and scrubbed and of good enough quality that it's usable and being able to be interacted between different sensors and different systems on the farm. With this, it's important to understand from that, that this standpoint is what, what can you do with that data and how do, we, how do we integrate this to what point? Where is the end game? For us in VSR Techs, what we see is being able to take this data and integrate it is really coming down to making managers, making dairymen, making herd managers, making facilities managers out at the dairies, top managers. What is a top manager? What does that actually mean? Or what does that really mean from our standpoint? Well, I'm going to see me pretty clearly and simply in this point. A top manager is a manager who actually cares about making sure that whatever they're focused on, whatever they're responsible for is optimized doesn't matter necessarily exactly what it is, but they care to do that. How do they do that? How do, how do we measure and how do we, how do we make sure that those top managers care? Well, it's by making their job easier, right? By making their job easier and making their job more efficient, they're gonna be a lot more likely to make sure that they care and continue to care. 
So how is this and, and why is this today, right? We, we have in, in ag, this is endemic of ag, we have a lot of cases, you know, where from the past, it's always been, we've done it like this. We've always done it like this. Daddy did it like this. We don't know, or we, we don't see any reason to change and do like this. And I can understand why that's done. I can understand why that's pretty common, right? You don't have a good, if you don't have a good holistic view of what you're doing and how it inter interacts and how it affects the different op operations on the farm, you're less likely to be able to make a change or make an improvement. Um, it also comes down to, from a simple standpoint, from a day-to-day -day, day -day standpoint, is people just run out of time or they run out of bandwidth to be able to, to interact and, and actually make improvements throughout the farm. The other part of this is, is understanding that a manager may be able to see a data system that only goes, you know, to deep, but only to a certain bandwidth or a certain, a certain spread in that area. They're not able to easily see how they interact with them. And part of this goes back to, again, the industry. Part of this is the industry debt doesn't, to this point, we don't do a great job of sharing data. This is getting better. Uh, it's not just the dairy problem, of course. Uh, this has been this way, and it is improving um, in the last several years in the row crop side of the ag business as an example. But if we want to be able to make sure that these, that these managers be, continue to become top level managers is, and may, we can make sure that their day-to-day -day lives are easier and easier, the only way to do this on an effective wide range is being able to take these different data streams, bring them together, and so we can see correlation and that causation from one or the other. And we can do this uh, from a standpoint of being able to make it so a dairyman can make decisions faster and more efficiently, then you're going to start to see more top level managers naturally spread out of this. Why? Because if it's easier, if it's faster, if it's more repeatable, then they're going to have more interest in it. So one thing I want to talk about from this uh, standpoint with it is where, where are we at today in the industry and how do we how do we get better from a physical standpoint of, of being able to integrate this stuff? This is a map we take from a VSR tech standpoint of, again, we, we have a focus on the cow in the center. We can see all those different, different areas around the cow and then it correlates all the way out. Where we focus on today is, is more in the middle from the optimization of the animal environment with intelligent barn. From our standpoint, we wanna see it continue to expand outwardly. And as I've talked about today, what we need and what the dairyman we feel needs, whether it's through our system or another system out there, is that interaction. If we can do this, if we can take all of her environment, be able to tie it to the facility of the, the barn itself, through all the different data streams and data collection techniques that the barn and the, the different facility has, we can see correlations and we can see causations. From a very practical standpoint, if we can do this and if we can see how she's reacting, how your overall production is, is reacting, and how your overall profitability are reacting with the environment, then we can make changes or we can re make recommendations, should I say, for the dairyman to make changes in a much more effective and optimal way. We take this beyond that and we can be able to see more things from a market standpoint and more, more standpoints around and around the farm, not just facilities, not just the cow, but also inputs from nutritionists and feed suppliers and all these other different aspects. Once we have this understood, understood of her and her environment and the facilities, much more of the recommendations or much more of the specialities that the, these different aspects all around there, we're gonna be able to utilize them a lot better. We're gonna be able to optimize to what our processor can actually take, what they want, and, and this is going to say in a, in, in a good and a bad way in a lot of cases is we can also optimize for what, what can we actually physically do on the farm for the best case of profitability, if that's our case, if that's our real care, or what can we best do from a herd health standpoint on the farm. This today, and again, don't get me wrong, can be done, but it's incredibly hard. It's labor intensive. It's time intensive. And it's a lot of math and a lot of coordination. If we want to see dairy take a, a step to the next level, which for me, again, is not necessarily scaling up to be larger and larger and larger. That has its limitations. I understand why it's done. I understand why, why it's the goal of a lot of people. 
But when it comes right down to it, how can we take this and optimize it for profitability? Uh, it's the name of the game in the Indian industry. Whether you're small or large, if you've got good profitability, if you've got a good ability to, to be able to see a little bit at, at the current time, a little bit in front of you, and also see what you did in the past and coordinate that with what you're going to do farther in the future, you're more likely to have a higher chance of being successful and being profitable for going forward. So again, coming back to it, why is this just not done today? Why it's not done today, when we come right down to it, is it's difficult. It's difficult, but there's a lot of value to it. And from a user standpoint, there's, I always, always use this term, there's measured value and there's intrinsic value. And what does this mean? So all the things around there we talked about from profitability, that's pretty easy. That's a measurable value, right? I can see that I, that I reduce my costs. I improve my profitability. Um, I, can, I can improve my cow health. I can improve my facilities management. Those are all measured and we can see that directly with the dairyman. And that can, that can have a lot of, again, a lot of positive impacts. Intrinsic things are, are harder to identify, but I think it's a lot more motivating and it's a lot more easily to adapt than necessarily just being able to see a measured result. And what I mean by intrinsic, a lot of that is coming down to if I have a system that can make the decisions I make on the dairy more efficient, more streamlined, more integrated, I now have more time that I can do something else. Whether it's on the farm or if I can go now, I've got more time to go see my kids' baseball game, or I can work on buying the next farm to be able to scale up. All of those things have a very intrinsic, uh, let's say powerfully motivation to, to a customer. So how can we do that and how can we know to go forward with that is to understand that the industry has to be able to start shifting to more predictive, predictive measures, predictive analytics. This day-to-day -day running from one thing to the other, um, <laughs> it's, it's just not scalable. Um, it's not scalable and it's not sustainable, especially when there's a shock to the system. Um, and, and what happens, I mean, this is pretty common in about any other industry that's seen it, is what happens is you start separating the wheat from the chaff from the people that are able to make this change and jump to more of a predictive analytics, understanding that data um, and being able to trust that data and make changes. Something I always talk about and, and, and hear questions on is, well, if I want to be able to start doing this and start using systems that, that can take this data and start correlating it, well, I'm going to have to know a lot about statistics. Is this thing going to tell me that? Do I, do I have to become a statistician or higher statistician or higher, higher level got to do this? I would say no. What we envision, what some of the people in the industry envision in, in terms of being able to tie all these different data sets together and be able to give you actionable results in terms of KPIs, recommendations, is something that should be able to be brought down from a very simple level. So a lot of the high-end math, a lot of the high-end algorithms are built into it. And from a producer standpoint, it's easy to digest and go. Something to be understood in this is if we can envision and if we can integrate a system like this where we have everybody in the industry working better together, all the different IoT providers, um, again, not for free, but for a price, can be able to have their, their data systems integrated with other people's data systems. We can take this, these sets of tools and data and make sense of them, how they all work together, and make recommendations based off of them. How are we going to be able to, to integrate this into the industry? And like I said earlier, when it comes to facilities, why more people don't you know, improve their facilities, it comes down to a price, right? It comes down to a lot of cases, CapEx expenses. The only way in, my, in, a logical, in a logical mind that this can go forward is you will probably see and probably have to, to understand that systems like this, especially systems that use cloud data storage, which anything like this, is, we're, we're storing and needing to store large amounts of data, huge volumes of data over time. Anything like that really has to be used in a cloud uh, standpoint. So you've got to have a cloud to be able to store, easily pull that data, easily compare that data. Uh, typically monolithic systems like on storage, on-farm storage, anything like that. If you have a monolithic system, it's typically more common with a CapEx or a, or a one-time kind of payment or a loan, a payment inside a loan. 
they tend to be monolithic. There's not much of not much of a incentive on the the creator of that to improve it, right? With an OpEx or subscription service style of setup, there generally is much more motivation from any uh, any producer inside the of, of the system or the data inside that system to, to keep improving it. They keep improving it because there's they're making sure that there's more value being added to that system. So the operator, the the actual uh, producer themselves, will continue to pay for that. Another part of this is we see more and more there's less labor, there's less skilled and good labor to be able to support and fix things out there in the industry when it comes down to from dairy farm to dairy farm. Part of an OPEX thing that, that's well understood in other parts of the industry and in other parts of, of industry at large is with OPEX, there's much more of an emphasis on customer experience, customer service, customer support. Uh, again, with an OPEX, there is much more of an emphasis to be able to do this uh, to be able to keep that subscription service going. There's also one important part of, from an OPEX standpoint, especially if you're a smaller or growing dairy, is the financial flexibility OPEX provides. You don't have to have a large part of maybe the, even the equity of the facility, the credit of the facility tied up in the purchase of something. And I'll even say this to, to a point is there is a lot of cases in, in dairy and ag in general of, well, what happens? What if we what if we use this and we see a benefit of it? Don't see the benefit of it. With an OPEX, the nice part about that is you can you can evaluate that from a producer standpoint. We use this. We get on a two or three year um, subscription on it. We evaluate that. We evaluate that over that two or three years, and you, from you you and your management team, you can then make that decision to continue on. Is there enough enough value being created with this? Is this making our lives better, easier, so on and so forth? But a key part of this is also from an industry standpoint, something that we ourselves need to do is look at effective ways to tie in hardware with this. And what I mean by that is, again, that cost of the, some of that data that we need to collect to be able to make this successful is physical on-premise hardware. So PLCs, IoT devices, generally, generally these are quite expensive to be able to install in from a CapEx standpoint. If we can work this into an OPEX standpoint, I think it just makes it more palatable to the dairy minimum operator. What can be done going forward? So what can be done from a dairyman standpoint? And again, those of us in the industry, what can we do to be able to try to create this system? Uh, again, like I said earlier, at the very beginning of the, this idea has, it's been around for a little bit, um, but it really takes, it really takes a couple of key things from, a, from an internal standpoint, from a producer and inside the industry. And that's one of the most important parts, which is being open to optimization. From the past, my past life being involved, especially in the row crop side of the business, I always give up a couple of interesting statistics. These are interesting to me. Question I always say is, well, what part of the row crop uh, part of the ag industry actually uses precision? The actual number is somewhere between 75 and 80% plus in the United States use precision ag in one form or the other. Now it's generally something pretty simple like being able to go from point to point, right? Auto track, things like that, very highly taken. Other things that are, that are not taken as much but provide a lot of value are things like prescriptive services, prescriptive fertilization, seeding, so on and so forth. Why? The reality is, is because that takes a much more open person, a much more open uh, producer that's able to, to look at their entire system and to start optimizing it from thing to thing. I can tell you that 70 to 80 plus percent in the row crop side that use precision ag, only about 15% of those producers out there utilize prescriptive, more analytical style of uh, precision ag services. And why? Because again, those are the top producing uh, customers out there. Not necessarily the largest farms or the most advanced farms in a lot of different ways, they're the most open and open to optimization. That's really from a from the reality of it down to a personal standpoint. So if you if you have that, if you're able to see that and to see a business with that, it, it again, it gives a lot of credence to, to being able to develop this going forward. If you want to, again, kind of grow into this over time, as I said earlier, I would take some pretty simple measures. Track what you're doing from day to day. Now, you may already do this. You may already create your own KPIs and so on and so forth. But beyond that, take a look at, your entire operation and specifically you can take some pretty simple notes of 
where is truly the time suck on the farm happening? Where is truly that time suck? And then what does that mean from a cost standpoint? Is it an ongoing time suck? Does it happen intermittently? Both are important, right? And understanding that is, is a big uh, motivator to being able to understand that, well, to take this and to be able to optimize this and streamline this from the next level is going to take something more than just somebody checking on this day to day. It's going to take understanding and being able to share and to see that understanding in, in real time easier. Another part, the last two, is internet capabilities. This has been a bane in uh, any kind of improvements or any kind of data collection and sharing systems in ag for some time. This is improving. There are more and more better uh, connections to the internet, especially with low earth orbiting satellites. Some of you guys may be aware of Starlink and some other systems like that, being able to give up to get gigabyte speeds on internet. Those are improving. I think in the next three to five years, we're really going to see that bullet point start to get de-emphasized in the dairy industry is it'll be just easier to get internet into a barn anywhere on your farm even. And then, like I mentioned earlier, set those KPIs on those different aspects, those different softwares that you use. And then take a look at those KPIs and try to spend a little bit of time looking at, okay, how, how would that KPI or how would the constituents of that KPI truly affect another KPI I have? Or another one that you guys, you answered, well, I check this KPI daily. I might check this other one weekly, monthly, yearly. Is there something even in those checking of those two KPIs where you're seeing something that may, might warrant, all right, there is, there is more of a correlation here between this one and this one that I think, or may I not necessarily see or understand. How do I improve that KPI, that, that farther one that I don't check daily? If I make changes to that and experiment on that, does that end up causing my, my main KPI that I care about and focus on, does it, cause, does it cause it to improve or be more consistent, be more consistent over time? It's, it's not easy, folks. I will tell you that. It sounds pretty simple when you look at one data set to the other. But over time, because dairies are run a lot, of, in a lot of cases, 24-7, 365, you can look at it at one point, and it may be different five minutes from now, three hours from now, five days from now. Taking that and integrating, integrating that and being able to see that from a mathematical standpoint over time is where a value, really the value of a system like this can bring to the dairy industry. So with that, I probably talked way more than I should. Um, Annie, I think we've got a couple minutes left. Thank you so much, Ryan. Um, while I'm giving people some time to put in their questions, um, we just wanted to take this time to invite you all to our next webinar, which will be on Friday, May 13th. Um, it will be with Dr. David Reed of Rocky Ridge Consulting. Um, really looking forward to this presentation as he's going to talk about how milk quality begins outside of the parlor. Um, so where you can really be looking um, in your freestall barns. So with that, um, I see we have one question so far. Um, and I know, Ryan, you, you threw out a lot of acronyms um, there. So one person is wondering, what does PLC stand for? I believe it's point load controller. Boy, you're going to screw me up on, on uh, acronyms here this morning. But it's basically uh, the simple way of seeing it generally is it's a, a small computer integrated circuitry on a, on a farm that's looking at a specific uh, set of criteria, set of, specific set of data. Typically on rotaries, there's different PLCs that are focused on different aspects. Um, you can have PLCs if you've got uh, water systems. PLCs are looking specifically at flow meters um, from a lot from your well, from different aspects of where the water is going out to to different parts of the farm. And you can also have PLCs that are that are focused on specific uh, the specific functioning of a system. Most uh, actually all digesters that I've ever seen running on farms have a PLC. Other made by Siemens or another uh, manufacturer out there that's able to, to take a look at that data and display it real time on a screen right there. Uh, one of the, it, since people ask about them and may not know about them, one of the biggest issues is PLCs are typically uh, pretty expensive, 15 to 20,000 plus plus to get them installed and run. Um, and right now, there's not a lot of cases of, I can see the PLC data on that screen, um, but not, but transferring that data from that screen physically at that location back to main server or at the at the main head office or into a data system itself is not really well done today. It's actually a, a key area on the farms we want to see improved because there's a lot of great data that's just not logged today. Somebody may have the better acronym 
clarification so. uh, programmable yeah. logic control there we <laughs> thank you Bear. Um, with that, I don't see any other questions and we're right at time. So thank you again, Ryan, so much for your presentation. I think we all um, enjoyed it and learned a lot. And thank you everyone who joined us and we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you, take care.